Now, this is the story that you just want to end. This is the story that and the couple and the people on, you know, on social media that you just wish would really truly go away. Welcome to another episode of the That's Scary with Melanie P podcast. I am your host, Melanie P. Listen, before I get started on this weekly episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are coming out every week with a different episode with the shits. And I want you guys to make sure that you are here to get the content. Make sure that you hit that uh, subscribe button and make sure that you hit the notification bell. So we have another week. We're on week, what, three of the podcast for January for the new year. And we've had a couple of guests. We've had a couple of different you know, prepare you for 2024 episodes. And I wanted to come on and just, you know, have a little conversation. So, you know, we always start each week with a mental health check-in. Lord, Lord, Lord. Here's the thing. (sighs) Mental health. Here is my mental health moment. Oftentimes, God will make you feel extremely uncomfortable when he wants to move you. I don't know, you know, examples of this could be at your job, in your relationship, um, with your family, whatever the case might be. Sometimes when things are happening in your life and they're, you're just getting, you're in a situation and it's just, you know, Things are happening and and you're trying to be comfortable. And here's, here's an example. Let's say that you are an expiring, inspiring entrepreneur. And let's say that's your dream to be an entrepreneur. But so much is going on on your nine to five. You know that your purpose and your passion is to be an entrepreneur. But you are on this job every day and horrible things are happening. You're just, you're doing everything right, but everything is going wrong. If I had to preach a sermon right now, the topic would be sometimes God makes you uncomfortable to make you move. Right. And I feel like that is my mental health. I um, always try to be transparent as I can. And, um, you know, there's just there's. And I kind of touched on this last episode during my mental health check-in but you know when it's a new year you really want to typically monopolize on the new year new me energy maybe not as much with that like oh I'm going to be a whole new person I think that's horrible I don't subscribe to that but I think that when we start a new year we want to start fresh and what I'm learning in life is that Things are not always going to work out the way that you want them to when you want them to. I don't think God really cares about midnight 2020, you know, you know, 2023 into 2024. I don't think that God, you know, that's our thing. That is flesh. That is us as humans. Oh my God, new years, new me, new this, you know, I'm certain that there's a lot of people who, you know, go into the new year and they have this fresh energy and things work out and great for them. But there's a lot of people like myself that go into a new year. And, you know, like I said, I was sick for the first week or so, um, just different things happening. And I feel like the, the title of my season is God is making you uncomfortable to move you. So, it is what it is. Mental health, I'm still here. Um, I feel like when, again, this is with maturity, and I and I keep saying this on the last couple of episodes, I feel like I'm in a season also of, you know, maturity and elevation and just wisdom and maturity. And I feel like um, understanding that God is always working for your good. And that doesn't always look pretty. And that doesn't always feel good, you know? Um, And I said this before, and I keep saying it because it's so applicable, you know, 
God is like our father. And, you know, our parents love us. They chastise us because they want the best for us. You know, when you were a child and you would get a spanking, when you were a child, you were mad. But then when you grow up and you're an adult, you're grateful that your parents gave you that spanking because you did something that you were not supposed to do because they're helping you to be the best version of you. And I just feel like that is the same thing with life and being an adult and understanding it is what it is. And that's my mental health check-in. So listen, this is going to be a really fun, hopefully, episode. I don't have any guest hosts. It's just me and you. And we're talking about a few random topics that people have sent to me in my DM. Um, And I just wanted to go over some of these things. Now, yesterday, I looked at the Kevin Gates interview on The Breakfast Club. Now, I'm going to admit I don't really, you know, I'm not really a Kevin Gates fan. I don't know what he raps. I don't really know. But um, he had an interview and something made me go to that interview and listen. And I thought it was such a good interview until the end, it kind of got, you know, degrailed. But I'm starting to see that a lot of our black brothers are getting, you know, the help that they need to be the best versions of them and to show up as the best versions of them. Now, on that interview with, uh, you know, DJ Envy and Charlemagne the God, I'm not saying that I agree with everything that he was saying, but I truly thought that most of it was so great. I thought that he was speaking about fasting um, and being accountable for his actions and just kind of elevating as a adult male. He spoke about, you know, at one point being suicidal and, um, I thought that was such a vulnerable thing to share, you know, as a black man, I'm just loving these black men out here healing themselves, you know, being healthy, um, working out, fasting, getting, you know, getting help, getting a therapist. I'm here for the black men out here doing it. And I love to see it. Um, he was very, very vulnerable. And he said that at one point, you know, he was literally going to commit suicide. Um, Now, some of the other things that he talked about was, you know, talking to himself. Now, he was talking in the interview about how he talks to himself. Now, it's so funny because one of the things that I was, you know, going to do in the new year was going to be to, like, give my alter ego a name and try to, like, you know... I, here's the thing, transparent. I was going to name her Charlie and I wanted to take care of Charlie. I wanted to just make sure that, that Charlie was happy and living the best life because sometimes we often look out for other people. Um, we care about other people more than we care about ourselves sometimes. And I'm like, I'm going to just name me a little alter ego and make sure that I'm looking out for this alter ego. But I said to myself, you know what? No, Melanie, I love Melanie. Melanie is who I want to focus on. You know, um, I love Melanie. I'm going to look out for her. I want to make sure she's eating right. I want to make sure that she's getting herself ready to work out. I want to make sure that she's happy, that she's peaceful. And he was talking kind of about the same thing. He was saying that he talks to himself. He encourages himself. He tells himself when he's wrong. Um, He's always looking out for, you know, Kevin Gates, you know, hey, Kevin, you're wrong. Or, hey, Kevin, you need to do this. Or, hey, Kevin, listen to your, you know, what your inner voice is telling you and um I just love that I just love that it really kind of correlated to kind of where I was in my life um he was talking about you know boundaries and positive frequency and just keeping his self at a very high frequency and kind of like removing anything um around him that would bring him to a lower frequency or anything that would bring his happiness down um and I, I just love the conversation he was saying something so funny. He was he said that uh, at one point before he started working out, he was kind of chubby and he was saying that he was on a video shoot and he had to hold a little baby and the little baby started like trying to breastfeed with him <laughs> because he was that fat that he had breast. And it was such a funny moment in the interview because he kept saying that, you know, the baby was trying to breastfeed. The baby was trying to breastfeed and 
it was just very funny to me how, again, vulnerable he was. And, you know, that was kind of like his motivation to be like, you know what? Hell no. I'm not about to be out here looking like a man with breasts and babies trying to breastfeed me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I just love the conversation. Um, he was very, very self-aware. He talked about the importance of prayer. Now, here's the thing that he was saying that I found to be so interesting. I had to drink with this. He said that he, as a man, can heal his woman. Again, he said that he is a man, he can heal his woman and that he can heal women in general and that men should tap into their power to be able to heal women. And I actually like that. Like I actually, actually like that. He was on, we were on the same page until he started talking about cheating and stuff like that. Now, you know, um, he kind of veered off, but I love the fact that, you know, this black man was talking about how he's here to kind of pour into his woman, to heal her, to understand her. And I, I actually really, really love that. Um, it was a really, really good, good good interview and it actually is going to make me want to like look at more of his interviews because he was just speaking so maturely you know he was saying how he doesn't even respond or even look at social media because it's just so toxic and you know he said that at one point like two weeks ago there was something out about him um, and a comment that he made. So you know how like people make comments on interviews and then when the person drops the comment, they cut it up to make it sound, to possibly make it sound different than what the person was actually saying. And um, in that interview, he said something about putting his legs up, having a man put his legs up in the air. But the way the person chopped it up was given like, you know, something else, like kind of, you know, leave it to the imagination type thing. Um and he was like, you know, yeah, he heard that, but he didn't care. Like he, he stand 10 toes down and him being a man, he stand 10 toes down and, and knowing what he said, he had no need to respond. He did not care because he knew what it was. You know what I'm saying? And again, I just, all you can do is respect that. All you can do is respect somebody who is, you know, grounded enough and mature enough in themselves to play chess, not checkers. You know, um, it was giving like, you know, leader, um, and just strong black man. I just, I love to see men talking about healing and accountability, um, mental health, physical health, um, you know, lifting women up and just being more of a, um, helpmate than a, someone that's hurting you and ruining your life. So I thoroughly enjoyed that interview. Now, another thing that was funny to me was Kim Luttrell was on Somebody recorded her in church. Now, y'all know Kim Luttrell. She is a gospel singer, and she is always in the news for something, whether she's bashing gay people or doing something crazy in the church. I have been in church my entire life, and this thing was so funny to me. There was a clip that has been circulating um, on the internet. Thank you. It's a solo. God's using me. Don't sing with me right now. Lord, oh, thank I'm singing alone, huh? You, ma'am, ma'am, with that mask. Let that mask work for you. I'm singing alone. Lord, I'll be back. No, I'll call on you when I'm ready. About this lady where she was singing a song and in church and somebody was trying to sing along with her and she was like uh uh baby I got this matter of fact I'm making it sound a whole lot nicer I think than what it really was like she was like this is a solo don't sing with me like this is a solo don't sing with me uh 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 don't sing with me I got it I got it the Lord is using me don't sing with me and I'm not doing it justice I'm gonna put the link <laughs> to her doing this in the description um but this lady is always in some type of mess it's something about her that ugh, she reminds me of those people that be in church and make people not want to go to church. Like she's always saying something negative about somebody doing something, you know, doing something that just doesn't align with what you would think people who are heavy in the church would be like something else in the news that is not as funny is Tiana Taylor and Iman Schubert. Now, I hope I'm not butchering his last name, but they have been in the news this week and I hate to hear it. So 
If you were on, um, if you listened to the Tipsy Thursdays live that I did, we were talking about Iman and Tiana, and it's just, it's getting worse. It's getting dirtier. If you, if you back up to several years ago, you know, they had their reality TV show. They was given black family, black love. You know, they were just like the Huxtables. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful family, beautiful children, um, beautiful show of black love. And now you fast forward and they are divorced. Um, it was on the uh, internet about Iman turning off all the power or something crazy, like so, some of the utilities in the house where the kids were. Um, he's all, again, another man who is on the internet, <laughs> you know, responding and giving off sass. Meanwhile, you know, Tiana is being very respectful of her, you know, uh, ex-husband or soon to be ex-husband, not speaking negatively on him. Meanwhile, he, you know, is coming out with, you know, cheating allegations while they were married and she's just keeping it really respectful. And it really made me think, you know, he no longer plays in the NBA and Tiana is such a strong, beautiful, talented, multi-talented person. She is not a one trick pony. Um, she's a singer. She's a rapper. She's an actress. She's a producer. Like her resume just goes on and on and on. And it made me feel, it made me think, you know, is this a situation where you have a couple and, you know, the woman is more successful and has more going on for her than the man? And now the man can't take it. And now, you know, we're having to succumb to his ego issue, you know? That is actually very, very common in relationships and marriages. And it truly, truly sucks because. You would think that in a marriage or specifically a marriage, but just a marriage or any kind of union that your partner is going to be your biggest cheerleader. And I'm finding that more times than not, it is actually the opposite. Like it's a true, um, it's very true that your partner can be jealous of you and not wish you the best. And it is a very, very hurtful feeling, you know? And I don't know those people personally. I can't, you know, tell you facts about them. This is just me on the outside looking in. But I, it's something about the way he's moving with their separation that makes me feel like there is some type of jealousy um, or just envy or something when it comes to his wife and her successes. Um, just the fact that he's speaking out you know, negatively or just alluding to things about their relationship or their divorce. And she's not saying anything, but she's still protecting him even while she's looking like the stupid one. It just says a lot, you know, and it's crazy because in the previous story we have here, Kevin Gates, you know, kind of showing maturity and, you know, um, you know, black man protector and accountability and all these things. And again, he said that he's not perfect, but at the end of the day, I had a clip that, um, was from my life. And I was saying that, you know, black men, we just want your protection, whether or not we're together or we're not like, we just want to feel protected. And I just feel like Iman is not protecting his daughters and his wife while they go through the separation. Like just because you are on, you know, TV or are a celebrity does not mean that you have to give people details about your marriage or details about your divorce or anything you don't have to give the, the you know the streets the internet anything you know even if you are not with that person your job truly especially if you guys have kids together it should be to protect the family you know what I'm saying and his he has daughters and a lot of times these men who do women women wrong they end up having a lot of daughters <laughs> and and, I, and I, I don't wish anything bad on anybody's daughters but it just it says a lot you know here you are with these daughters and are you doing the right thing by their mom and you know by them when they get older and they can see some of this stuff on the internet because you know as, as, as everybody know the internet never dies like this stuff on the internet literally never ever goes away um so I really hope that they can you know come together and be a united front um because we don't want to we don't want to be in the group chat oh my god speaking of group chat i just saw today and this was not even a part of um 
my outline. I just saw today that Krishan Rock got a damn tattoo of Blueface on the whole side of her face. Now, this is the story that you just want to end. This is the story that and the couple and the people on, you know, on social media that you just wish would really truly go away. I don't want to see them on my timeline. I think that they are the epitome of just, um, low trash type people, period, point blank, you know, no sugar coat in 2024. Those are my, those are my thoughts. They need a Yanla. They need therapy. They are toxic. I feel so scared and so sad for their children. Um, his son, the stuff that he said to his son and recorded it, um, the stuff he said about the little baby denying that the baby is his and talking so much crap about Krishan. And she turns around and, you know, has messes up her beautiful face with a tattoo of this man who has disrespected her and disrespected her child. It is just, it's, they are the people that just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it gets, it gets extremely worse. And, and I just hate to see it. Like she, I feel like she's one of those people who are one of those celebrities in air quotes that are just tormented. You hear her talk a lot about God and about, you know, how her first word was hallelujah and all this stuff. And I think that a lot of times, and I hate to sound like a preacher on these episodes, child, cause I got so much going on. Um, but a lot of times, you know, the devil will come and attack the people that have the biggest gift and the biggest purpose. And I'm not saying that it's the, you know, the devil making her do anything. But what I'm saying is that, you know, I think she is wrestling with something internally and I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt because I feel like she was trying. It seemed like she had her baby and that she was trying to distance herself from Blueface, And all of a sudden this man goes to jail and now she's back in love. It makes me so sad because she is in her early twenties and she is very immature and I'm, quite certain if we could all go back to when we, you know, was young and, you know, we were on the phone talking to somebody and you fell in love over the phone, you know, those conversations will make you forget how dumb these people are or how toxic they are. And I just feel like he's probably in jail calling her collect. They're having these conversations. She's forgetting about all the torment and the drama and the toxicity and the just abuse that he has put on her and their child um, and the utmost disrespect. And she just is forgetting all about it, you know? And it takes me back to um, when her mom was encouraging her to keep that baby. I just thought, you know, unpopular opinion. I just thought that was just horrible advice. I thought that that was horrible advice. Here this girl is in a toxic, abusive, violent, um, horrible, unhealthy relationship with this man. And she's barely 25 and now she's pregnant. And here's the thing that people do not talk about. People always talk about how women get pregnant to trap a man, but men get women pregnant to trap them. Because when you have a child with somebody whether it works out or it doesn't work out, that is an 18 year sentence, right? If you guys are not married and in a healthy, committed relationship and you guys have a child together, it doesn't make things better. It typically, statistically makes things worse. Um, and I just feel like, and I'm not shaming her mother. I'm a mother, I have daughters. And I just feel like that was really bad advice. Um, and coming from somebody who isn't, you know, maybe isn't the best example because her mom had so many kids and I don't know, based off what I've heard the, you know, the, the, the children have been in and out of jail. Krishan seems like she has had some abuse growing up. Did you give all those kids that you had the best environment? You know, I, you know, I don't know. So I just really hate to see Krishan, you know, making these dumb 
ass decisions for this dumb ass man and I don't even like talking about people like that negatively but you know I love our people and I you know I hate to see a young girl being abused by a man who's older than her and just making a wrong decision and now you are pregnant by this man and you are stuck and it seems like who are your friends who are your friends that are letting not even letting but that are not hey Krishan girl like listen this man don't love you. Hey, Krishan, he's cheating on you. Hey, Krishan, he's abusing you. Hey, Krishan, you know, like, and I'm not saying that she don't have that, but it just doesn't appear that she has that. I feel like she is somebody who has come into some fame and fame based off making dumb choices. And I feel like she's just trying to make dumber and dumber and dumber choices, you know, back to back um, just to stay relevant, you know, and she needs a intervention. And honestly, just seeing her, you know, on the, on internet, on the internet and just on YouTube and different things. She doesn't even seem like she's mentally in a place where she could even take an intervention. She, I feel like she just needs, she's somebody that does not need the lime, the limelight. Um, she's somebody that can't handle the limelight. And, you know, she started out on Zeus network. Um, well, she's, well, actually that, that's a lot. She started out on blue faces, like little, only fans reality tv show you know and just it's gotten worse and worse and worse from there speaking of zeus um people have been really mad with zeus network now you know i'm embarrassed to say that zeus is my guilty pleasure i do have a subscription and i do watch it religiously <laughs> i do watch baddies i do watch jocelyn's cabaret um i watch all the little crazy um zeus shows because it is entertaining i'm not gonna lie however um last week they were all over the blog because the owner of zeus has been accused of giving some of the baddies a um, std um all this just toxicity in the zeus family and it makes you ask the question like what here's something that funky Doniva said on one of his um episodes that I thought was like really really interesting you know sometimes when we say like okay they got us out here looking bad what is the white equivalent of the Zeus network like what is the white equivalent of um baddies I don't even know if they have it you know I guess in what I'm saying, I, I kind of feel a little bit bad to be supporting the network, but I'm grown. I'm not out here trying to fight nobody or be on a reality TV show doing nothing, you know, like that. But there are a lot of people who glorify, um, you know, this kind of behavior. And it does make us look like fighting baboons on TV, you know? Um, it's just a really interesting question, you know, of morality in terms of, you know, Zeus Network. Are, are they helping or are they hurting the culture? And I feel like that's kind of a dumb question because obviously they're not helping. I mean, yeah, they're creating these stars and yeah, they're putting money in people's pocket, but I feel like they're not doing anything to uplift the community. Um, now, I remember when the owner of Zeus Network was on TGI Friday or TGIF on Fox Soul, um, Funky asked him, he was like, you know, why are you putting this trash out here making us look like idiots? And he was like, when he put the positive or the non-fighting type of shows um, on the network, nobody watches them. Like he was saying that he did a reality TV show with Drea. Nobody watched it. He did something with um, somebody else and like nobody was watching it. But when he puts out black people and the baddies and, you know, chance love and, you know, um, all these different shows where black people are just looking kind of crazy. That's where he gets the most money. So I don't know. I feel like, you know, this is a situation of, you know, kind of, is it a situation of selling your soul? You know, like all money isn't good money. And, you know, he's taking these young girls, even Natalie Nunn, like Natalie Nunn is, it, she's 40. I think she's 40 years old. And, you know, yeah, she's making money, but it just, it does look ridiculous. Like it looks ridiculous. People fighting and then making up and then like, you know, let's fight, you know, uh, what are they? They always being like, um, do your big one, do your big one. And it just, it, when I hear Natalie say it, it kind of sounds ridiculous because I feel like, girl, you are like 42 years old. 
using all these young people's, you know, slang and all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, I get that there was a point in time when she was a baddie, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, beating up people on TV, but it always comes a time where you need to elevate. And she's a little bit to me too old to be doing the same horse and pony show. And there is no pun intended in that. So I guess the question would be, you know, do you feel like Zeus network needs to be canceled? Do you feel like it is, you know, affecting the culture or do you feel like it's just another reality TV show and people making money, you know, speaking of children making dumb choices. So one of my friends sent this to me. I thought this was, was a very interesting, um, thing that happened on um, Instagram or actually TikTok. So there was a uh, gay white couple that adopted a black baby. And he was on TikTok saying, you know, showing the baby and showing the baby's hair and saying, you know, can you guys send me messages on, you know, how I how I like deal with or not I don't want to say I don't want to miss speak on what he said but basically saying you know how does he take care of this black baby's hair and he didn't word it that way but that was basically the gist of what he was saying and he got a lot of negative feedback on um on TikTok and I remember what made this story stick out to me was that uh, uh someone in a chat said I don't understand why they adopt these black kids. They need to just leave them alone or whatever the case might be. And I remember thinking that was a very interesting and odd statement to say. Um, I was on um, online and on YouTube just looking up some adoption like stories and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, you know, I, I get where people are coming from when they're saying that when they're thinking of the mindset of you're on TikTok showing this black baby. And sometimes I feel like when these celebrities and these white people adopt these black children, sometimes when they are showing videos of them, it, it looks like um, performative or like they're accessories. You know, a couple of years ago, there was this video going around where this, uh, white lady was in Africa somewhere and she was like, you know, filming these like black kids. And it was just really, really cringy. Um, and it's just like, why are you filming that? You know what I'm saying? Um, so I guess I understand where people are coming from when they say, you know, don't use these children as props and don't use them as just like TikTok videos and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know if he was doing that. I don't know like what other videos he has, but it made me think like, should white people not be adopting black children? I just, I don't agree with that. You know what I'm saying? Like to me, my thought process is I would much rather, um, a beautiful child, whether they're black, white, green, get a home, <laughs> you know, period, point blank. Now, let me be clear, a healthy home, not a home where, you know, they're being abused or, you know, they haven't, um, I guess done the research or, you know, a healthy home. And, when I was actually looking more into this story, I saw a couple who actually had um, adopted, they were a white couple. They had adopted like black, two black boys. And so they had their biological white children and then they had the adopted black brothers and they had had them for a couple of years. And she was on YouTube and she was saying, you know, Looking back at it, there's things that people need to be aware of when adopting children, especially if you're adopting children who are not, you know, of the same background or race as you. And, you know, one of the things that she said was that when you are going to adopt a child, honestly, if they're black, white, green, but especially if they are of a different background, but in general, you should make sure that you have gotten therapy, that you have, um, you know, kind of done the work on yourself. Because something she said that I thought was so bold of her to say is that when people adopt children, they have this fantasy in their head that this child is going to come into your family and you're going to love them the same way you love your biological children and things are going to be perfect all the time. But she was like, that's just not true. And I thought that was very, 
very transparent of her to say that because I feel like pe- that makes sense. I mean, I've never adopted anybody. Um, obviously, I have a relative that's, that was adopted and you can't tell me that um, that's not their biological parents. Um, but when it comes to adopting children, especially if you're adopting someone that's of a different ethnicity, especially if you already have children, I think that you really have to, um, do the research, do the work to make sure that you understand what you're getting yourself into and also understand about that child's culture, not just if they're black, um, if they're, you know, Hispanic or whatever, you know, if you're adopting a child, you want to be educated on their ethnicity, on their culture. Um, she was saying that with her two a black, two adopted black sons that, you know, she wasn't prepared for the questions that people would have and expect for her to answer, you know, in terms of, Hey, are the, like, she said that somebody in her church asked, um, the kids or, or this one of the children, if they were actually real brothers, you know, and these are children. So, you know, kind of preparing yourself for those kind of conversations, how to navigate those conversations um, in the best interest of the children. I also saw this really beautiful story of this 16 year old um, African-American boy, and he had been in the foster system for, you know, all of his life. And this white couple adopted him at 16 and he was literally crying. He was so happy. You could tell that those parents loved him. You can tell that he was happy. So I feel like ultimately I just don't think that it's fair to look down or judge or, you know, um, question people who adopt children of a different race. Do I understand where those questions come from when you have people, you know, Hey, what do I do with with this black kid's hair? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know if that should have been a video because that kid is going to grow up one day and see that. And you just never know like how that could like be traumatic for that child. So I just don't think, you know, kind of putting it as TikTok videos for views is probably the best idea and again I do understand why some black people will be hesitant in you know thinking that white people are going to give the most um I guess a good home a fair home you know I can understand the concern but at the end of the day at least they have a home you know um one of, one of the statistics was saying is that when, when children age out of foster care, 80% of them are homeless, <laughs> you know, right after as the, when they age out of foster care. So I feel like, you well, you know, why deny a child, you know, a home just because the home is, um, is white, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, so I feel like this has been a really great, week um I got a lot of stuff going on oh my god um I got an opportunity to um work with Southern Edge the liquor brand over the weekend um they had a comedy show um they were actually hosting a comedy show with comedian Howie Bell he wants to be on the podcast so hopefully he'll be on the podcast soon it was such a great experience um you know seeing uh this black owned liquor brand support the community and just you know they have an amazing and amazing product as you can see here um we have the salted caramel whiskey and then we also have the um sweet tea vodka my personal favorite is the sweet tea vodka i think it's just such a smooth drink um it's funny because i feel like they kind of market the drinks a little bit to women because they are whiskey and vodka and sometimes you don't always have women who are whiskey drinkers you know um but men love this drink just as much if not more than um the women it's very smooth you know how sometimes you have these um drinks and it just burns going down your chest um you don't have that with these drinks. Like they're so good. I've tried both of them. I love the sweet tea, um, vodka. You can mix it. You don't really have to mix it. I never mix mine. It's just really, really that good. I keep saying this, but literally since I tried the drink in December, 
I have not had anything else, <laughs> like any other liquor. I've not bought any other liquor except for Southern Edge. It is so good. It is black owned. It's all natural ingredients. It's just, listen, thank me later. There is a link in the description to purchase and support this black owned liquor. This liquor, uh, someone told me that, that they ordered it like on a, on a sun, like they ordered it on a Saturday online and literally had it on their front door Tuesday <laughs> or like Monday or Tuesday, something weird like that. Such a good drink, such a good brand. Make sure you support them. Make sure when you put Melanie P in the promotional coupon for free shipping straight to your door. Melanie P is supports the podcast and it also supports the liquor brand. You guys, Thank you so much for coming and listening to That Scary with Melanie P podcast. We have weekly episodes and so much coming this year of 2024. Always enjoy the conversation. If you want to be a guest on the show, send me a DM. Make sure you are subscribed and that you're sharing the content with family and friends. And we will see you guys next week.